This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. I'm your host Duncan McLeish, welcome to the show. Up on this episode we're taking a look at a brand new horror release. This is The First Omen. It has come out last week in the UK in theatres and I believe about the same time in America so I don't think you got this one before us. I think it all came around the same time. There will of course be spoilers on this episode. Our long intro says that we do spoilers. I'm going to tell you we're going to do spoilers and ain't splitting them up. So if you're going to continue watching this video beyond the trailer, then know that I will likely spoil some information. And it's on you. You have the power right now. If you've not seen the movie, hit stop, add to your playlist, come back and check it out some other time after you've seen the movie. If you've already seen it, you don't care about spoilers, then, you know, just keep watching and don't say that you weren't warned because you were again right now. Um, also, if you are someone that is wanting to find out more about the movie. I don't know why my hands did that. I want to find out about more about modern horror movies, i.e. stuff that's just come out this year. Baghead, um, I did a review of that in an interview with the director, which dropped a couple of days ago on this channel. Go forth, check it. It has just been... It was released this year in the UK. I think it was released last year in the States, but it's now available on Blu-ray DVD and digital in the UK. So, yeah, a really cool interview and a chance to chat about the movie there for you. So, we're going to be talking about The First Omen, right? So, that's what we're doing right now. Um, The First Omen is technically a prequel to the movie from the 70s, The Omen. Yeah, that movie. And I keep forgetting how much of a franchise this is. Technically four films in the original run, then a remake that came out in 2006, which no one went to see. And yet this is now a prequel. So set before, obviously, prequel, the original Omen. And this one is the setup to the birth of uh, the Antichrist, a.k.a. Damien. So yeah, we're going to be discussing that movie after the trailer for it, which is coming up right now. I'll be right back right after this. Listen to me, Margaret. There are two churches. One follows God, and the other follows something else. Ah! The first omen is deliciously disturbing. I need proof. Of what? And an unchained cinematic beast. That girl is to be the mother. That's what you're saying. It's the most terrifying movie of the year. You've even given it a name. Damien. The First Omen. Rated R. Only in theaters April 5th. And welcome back. So you've just seen the teaser trailer for The First Omen. Um, Okay, let's give you some information on the movie. As always, I'm going to superimpose pictures from the movie so you can avoid watching me read a computer screen, which is a lot less interesting than it actually sounds. The First Omen is directed by... Arakasha Stevenson, based on the screenplay by Tim Smith, Keith Thomas and Arakash Stevenson. The movie itself stars Neil Tiger Free, Rafa Nissen, Sonia Braga, Tafik Barhom, Maria Cabrallo, Charles Dance, Bill Nye, Nicole Sores, Ishtar Curry Wilson, Andrea Arkanelji and a bunch of other folks are in there as well. So, The First Omen, a prequel to The Omen from 1976, almost 50 years ago that movie came out and for some reason someone said, you know what, prequel. Now, The Omen is one of the most unlikely franchises, although on paper totally makes sense why you would franchise it. Um, You go from, you know, Damien as a small baby uh, into a toddler, 
and then you jump into his school life, you then jump into him as Sam fucking Neil, excuse the language, um, heading towards the, the lobbies of power, and then you get the fourth one, and we don't talk about that too much, because the we go off the rails a little bit. Then we got the 2006 remake, which did nothing for anyone except the marketing campaign of it being released 666. Yep, that was a real thing. Um, and we've been away from it for a while. And Immaculate is just out, like, a couple of weeks ago, which is not uncommon. I mean, there's plenty of examples, I think, of The Descent in the Cave, which came out, what, mere months apart, of Hollywood kind of double hitting you with movies, like studios rushing to get something out because they hear another studio is working on something. So a little bit of that is kind of trying to steal thunder. A little bit of that is trying to capitalise on the attention that other movies are getting. You like that nun movie? You might like this nun movie. Um, the First Omen is essentially the, the inception, and I mean that quite literally, of... The, the Antichrist Child. So this is the origin story. The origin story that you never really thought you needed to have, but this movie does. Frustratingly, it gets some of the details wrong, which are not that difficult. Like, I'm... I went through the Omen movies recently um, for something that never happened. And then I went back and watched that first one the week of going to see this movie. So it's very fresh in my mind. And the idea of... The premise being that it was a mother that was a creature, not a nun, and how they've kind of inversed that. By the way, this review riddled with spoilers, so once again, heed the warnings. If you want to know nothing about this movie, just jump on. This will not be the first time I spoil the movie. Ain't going to be the last either. Um, the way they reversed that didn't make any sense to me. Out with a like a like let's pour boiling water on Duncan's brain for continuity's sake. Um, it was, it was really quite frustrating. And the prequel itself, whilst it is a very traditional horror movie, and that, in some respects, is probably its biggest asset, uh, Immaculate's a movie that really ticks a lot of boxes in terms of what a horror movie should do, but it's the bonkers ending that kind of elevates it to something a bit, a bit better than it probably should be. I felt while watching it, it was overtly, darkly camp until the end and where things got super serious and like very, very over the top. Um, the first Omen doesn't do that at all. If anything, it actually treads a very, very sensible, very serious line through its runtime, which is good because it's the prequel to a very serious 70s horror movie. So, and a classic, bona fide, The Omen is a bona fide classic horror movie. So the fact it, it kind of tries to tie in its tone at least with that, I appreciate it. The cinematography is absolutely wonderful. Um, the choice set and locations, attention to detail, it's, it's just it's all there. And I love that aspect of it. So that, once again, is another big tick. The biggest issue I have with a movie like this is I don't know who the audience is. Because I'm certainly not the audience. When I watch The Omen, I'm never thinking about how the baby was born. I just accept that the baby's been born. Um, so when I go back and watch the prequel and then I see continuity errors, I, I'm a bit confused as to how I'm supposed to accept this movie. Now there will be a school of thought that says, well Duncan, sit down. There are people that have never seen The Omen before and this will inspire them to go and see the classic from 76. Now I would argue that that's not going to help. Um, this movie co-ops deaths, direct deaths from the first Omen movie and actually makes them grander. So when you get through this movie and then you get to the next movie, um, that being the 76 Omen, and you get yourself through that, you're going to see the same deaths done, but without the the modern technology, the impact or whatever, or sometimes just the sheer one-upmanship. So it's going to feel lesser. And I kind of feel like it's, it's stealing the, the jelly from... The Omen's Donut, so to speak. And I kind of feel a bit sorry for it. I also think that there's a part of me that feels specifically at the end, and we'll talk about that at the end, where there is too much explanation at the end. There's too much trying to make it neatly fit right against the next movie. And I don't know if we need that either. Um, the, the closing two minutes of this movie are one of the strongest eye rolls I've done this year. And it might be that way to the end of it. Now, it might sound to you 
as if I'm just hating on this movie and beating it up. And I'm not, like, 2024 thus far has not been a stellar year for horror movies, if we're all being honest and taking a step back. They've all been of an average to less than average or poor across the board. Um, my favourite probably is Late Night with the Devil so far that I've seen this year. And even then, I didn't love that movie. I found that deeply flawed by by the end and the way they wrapped up. So, kind of sitting down and checking this one out, you're kind of in a position where, I don't know, I wasn't actually expecting much of anything from this. And a lot of the elements it gets right, specifically in its construction, its pacing, it's almost a two-hour movie and doesn't feel like a two-hour movie. Um, all those aspects really brought me in. I think the casting is on point with the exception of Bill Nye. Um, I think Bill Nye, an interesting uh, actor at the best of times, in this, it's too over the top as the kind of cardinal head priest dude that he's playing. I don't know kind of papal structure or, or, or church terms. Um, but his pronunciation of certain Latin words just didn't sound right when, you have, when you're surrounded by other actors who are clearly, clearly... Italian and could just take this over. It was very distracting. Notwithstanding that, moving that to the side. Um like I found like the casting was really good. Central character, um was it Nell Forrest? I think she is brilliant in uh, in the kind of the, the main protagonist's role. Um I thought she was excellent right to the very end. I, I found her a compelling actress and very good at what she what she did on screen, which was a combination of confusion, despair, joy, uh, mental illness. Like the, she covers a, a a breadth of different performances and executes them all really great. Um, the Coven score for the movie is also awesome. I really really enjoyed that. Scores this year have actually been outshining movies for me, um, and the the score is rich and handsome and it works really 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 well on this movie. So I like that aspect. But it did kind of feel like a needless origin story. In a world where the omen doesn't exist, and I haven't seen the omen and have no chance to see the omen, this movie actually stands up, not as a perfect movie by any stretch of the imagination, but a really good kind of throwback 70s horror movie. I, I enjoyed that aspect of it. But in a world where the omen exists, I don't know if this movie is actually doing damage to that movie that comes after. One, through continuity issues. But two, like I said before, co-opting those deaths. I don't understand why you would do that. I I, 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 I understand they are the, the iconic scenes from the omen are recreated in here. But once again, if they're direct, if they're in here for older audiences to go, eh? Huh? Uh, see, uh, that's from the, the first movie, then I don't know what purpose that serves. Like, let's recreate things that audiences have grown up with for the last 50 years. Don't see the benefit there. Or if they are kind of like, uh, this is what the, the power of the Antichrist does, I don't understand that as well. So the Antichrist can only kill priests by dropping heavy objects on them and kill, like, nannies, au pairs and nuns by hanging in, in the case of this movie, self-immolation. Um, yeah, so let's talk about the very, very end, right? This movie actually, and here's your, once again, warning for massive spoilers, but if you're already this far into the review, then this is on you and ain't on me. But the movie ends right up to the point of with the baby being born and them going to do the old switcheroo and give it to the American family that will ultimately be in the, the first Omen, well not the first Omen movie, The Omen from 1976. But it's like they have a dossier file and a picture which is clearly just a, an image render from the original Omen movie in there and the, we, we go right into the hospital and right to the exchange and once again I don't know who that's for. Like the movie after that they have the kids so... Why are we doing that? I'm, I'm a bit confused. But I understand Hollywood sometimes likes to make the connection. The bit I couldn't forgive was the very final scene, which is almost like a Samuel L. Jackson Avengers cut, um, with Ralph Innocent, who's absolutely phenomenal in this, showing up at um, our protagonist's cabin, where she's hiding out with... Um, 
the the twin sister. That's right. We went all Star Wars. Um, the twin sister of Damien, and essentially another girl who would have been Damien's vassal. Um, if she'd been a little bit older. Once again, time scales are not really explained in this movie. I don't know why they couldn't wait for her just to be a little bit older. Um, it feels like a faux pas. It feels like a big mistake, but I'm sure, I'm sure somewhere it's explained. It's not explained at all. Um, but, uh, yeah, Ralph Innocent shows up and basically, like, oh, the church are after you. They're going to come and hunt you down. You'll never be safe. Oh, and by the way, your son survived. And uh, he's been given to a family and they've given them a name and I was looking at the screen saying, don't say it. Don't do it. I know you want to do it, but don't do it. And she's like, oh, what's his name? And he's like, they called him Damien. And I was like, of course they called him Damien because we know there's a movie after this and it's described that he's called Damien and I want to throw myself off a bridge right now. I don't understand that. So nitpicking aside... It's a fine movie. It's like it's not one that I would rush out and ever check out again. I don't think it enriches the Omen at all. And if it doesn't, then why make a prequel? <laughs> like that's my big question. Is the Omen from '76 a better movie because of this? No, no, it's not. Then don't do it. Um, I give this a three point five. I enjoyed this as much as Immaculate for. I would say completely different reasons. I found Immaculate a much more entertaining movie. I found this much more competent a horror movie. But neither one of them are great horror movies. And will I would be surprised if they meet my end of year list. Um, which surprises me. Because I've seen nothing but praise and love for the first Omen. And I don't get it. I think it is a very, very, very average horror movie. Against the backdrop of a year which has had painfully bad horror movies. And maybe that's... Maybe that's why people are clambering and climbing to it so much. But ask yourself this. Does a movie which answers questions no one has and recreates deaths from the movie that comes after in a fashion which feels bolder make that first movie, which is for all intents and purposes, like I said before, a bona fide classic, better? No, it doesn't. So I arrest my case, Your Honor. 3.5 out of 5. Thank you very much for checking out this review. You may have noticed a costume change. That was because my original audio, which I recorded about a week ago, was corrupted. And I've had to re-record this segment. Um, and you're just going to have to stick with the weird continuity of outfit changes. I'm not that much of a diva. Uh, if you're checking us out on YouTube, then please like and subscribe. Leave some comments down below. Are you one of the folk that really enjoyed this movie? It's done gangbuster business. There's a lot of horror fans digging the first omen. Let me know why. Are you on the other side? Are you with me? Do you find this needless uh, but enjoyable nonetheless? Then let me know. And if you just thought it was trash from start to finish, also let me know. But make sure you like and subscribe to the video. If you're checking me out on Spotify or Anchor, using the video podcast functionality there, make sure you're subscribed and answer the question that drops at the end of the episode. And lastly, if you're checking me out on any of the podcatchers out there in audio form, then please hit subscribe. That way you get access to over 1,300 episodes on our RSS feed as well as all upcoming episodes of which there shall be many. Thank you very much for checking out this review. And all that's left for me to say is wherever you are, whatever the time zone is and whatever you're up to in this big bad world of ours, this is Duncan McLeish broadcasting live from under the stairs saying take care of yourself and I'll speak to you next time.